Yep, today we're going to continue with five more ways you might be sabotaging your skincare routine and what you can do to correct that. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sherry Proof. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new, welcome. And if you're already a part of the Sherry Proof family, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. And while you're at it, why not like this video one time, <laughs> leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get right into today's video. Let me start by thanking you guys so much for your feedback for the comments on the last week's video, as well as I got quite a few DMs about some of the things that I talked about. A lot of people realized that they needed to up their game when it comes to their skincare routine. Point number six, and we are going to deal with the elephant in the room, and that is sunscreen. So, how might you be sabotaging your skincare routine when it comes to sunscreen? It will be if you are not using sunscreen properly. In two ways. One, by the amount that you apply. And two, this whole topic of reapplication, which tends to be a sore spot even for diehard sunscreen users. So let's talk a little bit about this because there's a point that I really want to make today. So when it comes to quantity, in general, you need about a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen for the average adult face. Now, if you really want to go into the nitty gritty, there is a scientific formula that you can use. You can take sheets of paper, get all the measurements from your face and work out the precise amount that you actually need. If you don't want to go through that and you do have an average size face, then the quarter teaspoon should be a really good gauge. So that's one thing. But if you've been following me for a while and if you've watched several of my sunscreen videos, you guys would know that I have rehashed on this topic way too many times. However, it can't be said enough because I deal with new clients every single day and a lot of people are now getting the news with regards to how much sunscreen they should apply. So we will continue to talk about it. But then the other issue is reapplication. And I know, I know this one is tough and tricky, especially if you wear makeup. Now, if you're not a makeup wearer, then reapplication should be much easier for you because it's literally about just throwing your sunscreen in your bag, taking it with you and reapplying. However, when you are a makeup wearer like I am, like if I'm going out, I will usually have on makeup, then sunscreen application is not necessarily a thing that you want to pause to do because while actually having to stop to put on the sunscreen is an issue, the main thing for me as well as many other people is how is this going to disrupt my makeup? Is this going to make me look extra greasy and all of that? And trust me when I say, you need to decide for yourself what is really your priority. What are your goals when it comes to skin? Because you might be like now in your 20s, 30s, 40s, still with great skin and not thinking about the next 10, 15, 20 years and then say, well, you know, to hell with it. Whatever happens, happens. But then these are the moments of investment that really matters when it comes to skincare. So for me, it was worth it to test and try to find a way to be able to reapply my sunscreen when I'm out. Now, this is the thing. I reapply if I'm going to have UV exposure. Most times I am indoors, I'm actually in a room with blackout curtains. Absolutely no UV touches my skin for most of the day, but I still have on sunscreen simply because it's my habit. I usually leave the house in the morning to drop my daughter to school. So I am getting some UV exposure and then I'll get some in the late evening again. So in that time when we have the strongest UV exposure, which is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. every single day, I'm not usually having UV exposure. But once I'm indoors, I don't reapply. Now, a lot of times I am going outside in the afternoon, maybe two after two and so on. And therefore I will take my sun stick and I will do a touch up. However, if I'm going to be outside during those hours, which I like to avoid anyway, <laughs> I will walk around with my liquid sunscreen and a puff or a sponge and use that to touch up because sis ain't able. Because I am seeing now the impact on my skin with sunspots and so on that are showing up. From the years of sun exposure that I have, I only really started to apply sunscreen properly in the last 10 years. And a lot of that wasn't even with reapplication. And I'm already seeing the impacts of that. So I really want to take care of my skin and prevent damage and delay whatever I can at this point in my life. It's up to you. 
it's completely up to you. You need to decide what are your skin goals and how much you're willing to commit to that when it comes to reapplication. But this is the point that I want to drive home. So I think in the last video, I kind of gave you a little rundown with regards to how we're actually losing collagen in our bodies, right? So follow me here. With regular chronological aging, we're losing about 1% of collagen every year, right? But do you know that collagen levels have been found to be 20% lower in sun-damaged skin versus skin that has not been exposed to UV. So it's one thing that we are losing that 1% of collagen every year. Worse yet when we get to that menopause stage where there is also a drastic dip. But that takes into consideration that you are not having UV exposure and that your skin is not sun damaged. If your skin is sun damaged, that collagen loss is even worse. Listen, and we also know that UV exposure is responsible for 90% of the signs when it comes to facial skin aging. Guys, just wear the sunscreen. Just wear the sunscreen. Whew, okay. I think I talked enough about that. <laughs> Let's go to the next point. Another way a lot of people are sabotaging their skincare routine is that they skip moisturizer at night. I cannot tell you how many times I am reviewing skincare routines to give recommendations and a lot of people feel comfortable. They just maybe apply serums or sometimes they just wash their face and they don't apply moisturizer because they figure, well, my skin is probably getting enough hydration if I applied a serum or I applied an essence. The reason I am talking about this and I'm addressing here mainly people that look like me, people with skin of color is because our skin is actually more prone to what we call trans-epidermal water loss, more so than lighter skin tones or Caucasian skin tones. Our skin also naturally has lower levels of ceramides. So moisturizing, especially at night, becomes even more important when you are a person with skin of color. We talk about moisturizer because of a lot of the actives that we're using, for example, retinoids, exfoliants, and you want to make sure that you really protect your skin barrier and all of that. But there is a reason why it is so important because that moisturizer forms such an important part in taking care of the health of your skin, protecting your skin barrier, locking the hydration that you probably put on your skin when it comes to serums, essences, toners, and so on. And then of course, just dealing with this issue that's just part of our natural genetics. So you really don't want to be using a retinoid, starting a retinol because Sherry talked about all the benefits and then you're not using a moisturizer. It's like you're not really giving your skin everything that it needs to work optimally to really get the benefits that you're looking for. I also personally usually recommend a heavier moisturizer at night than compared to daytime simply because at night we also have that higher level of moisture loss in the skin so you want to make sure that you put on a really good hydrating moisturizer and just because I'm talking about thicker it doesn't mean that it's going to clog your pores and all of that I have oily skin and I do use a heavier moisturizer at night and that has made a world of a difference for me. There are also many night moisturizers that can be used over several different skin types. But if you are concerned that, you know, a thicker moisturizer might cause you breakouts, just look at the formula. Look and see if there are things that usually clog your pores, usually create breakouts to you, that you probably have sensitivities to that don't necessarily work for you. And just go through the process of elimination until you find the one that's right for you. But that moisturizer at night, key, don't stop. Number eight. <laughs> So I understand. We get home from work. We have a lot of things to do. You have to see about the children or not. You have a lot of chores or not. You maybe need to relax, you know, and the time could just run away. Now, if you're like me, I usually take my shower very close to my bedtime because, you know, I want to lie down the bed and feel as fresh and as cool as possible, especially these days. However, that also means that that's the time that I'm going to do my skincare routine. If in practice you are doing this, doing your skincare routine, and then just jumping on your pillow, you are literally sabotaging your skincare because all your skincare is going to be absorbed by that pillow and not your face. Remember, even though you've applied products on your skin, it really needs at least 30 minutes for everything to really get in there, start doing what it has to do. So while we'll usually recommend, you know, try to do your skincare at least an hour before you go to bed, 
I would say you could probably push it to at least 30 minutes before. And honestly, that's if you're probably sleeping on silk and satin pillowcases, which I do. Because if you're sleeping on cotton pillowcases, for example, the pillowcase is probably going to look better because it is taking all your skincare. So you just got a little tip in between there as well. If you haven't, try to switch to a silk or a satin pillowcase. It's going to be so much better for you. Point number nine is a two-in-one. And this point has to do with not giving your routine enough time or perhaps not adjusting your routine after a long time. So you decide to start a skincare routine or you probably decide to make a change to your skincare routine and you've started using some products. And I'm not talking about experiencing sensitivity or reactions here because once that happens, you definitely need to make an immediate change. I'm talking about you've started a skincare routine and within a week or two you're expecting to see the world turn upside down or drastic changes that will probably not occur so quickly as skincare takes time or the other thing is that you give up way too quickly and you do not allow the combination of products and ingredients to really start working together. Your natural skin cycle turnover will usually be about six to eight weeks depending on how old you are it could even be longer and with a consistent routine we would be able to see in about that time six to eight weeks you know any little changes anything that's happening is the skin adjusting to the routine that I'm using and then we could look at what are the expectations we have what are the ingredients the percentages the frequency that we're using and what we are expecting reasonably within that time frame but when you start a new product or you start a new skincare routine and in two three weeks you're like oh this is not working for me and you're ready to give up like no, it doesn't work that way. You need at least, at least six to eight weeks to start to see any change or for it to really start doing what it has to do because of our skin cycle. I will usually tell clients as well, give your skincare routine at least three to six months and take photos once a month and let's review it, look at it because a lot of times when you're looking at yourself every day in the mirror, sometimes you don't see small changes that are happening. But if you have photos like every month, you take it in similar light in, in the same room you can actually start to see visibly are there changes and what's happening with the skin so start the routine and be consistent with the routine and give it time but the flip side of that is you've been doing the same routine for the past five ten years you haven't changed anything in your skincare products and you're wondering like what's going on so you're sabotaging your skin because perhaps your skin type change your skin needs change your skin condition has changed and usually we would recommend you do an assessment of your skin once a year it might very well be that nothing has changed your products are still working fine you can absolutely continue with your routine but in about a year when you do an assessment that's probably a good time to see if there are any changes maybe you can switch up products and so on I have clients who like to switch up things way before that for example the things that I usually like to switch around would be like my cleanser my toner my moisturizer simply because sometimes you want a little bit of a change and that's fine but when it comes to active ingredients I know that there are some people that are really stuck to routine I use this and I use this alone but yeah check it out because it might be that what is happening with your skin right now a year later two years later you might need to make a change in what you're using maybe the strength maybe take something out completely put something else in maybe another skin issue is showing up that you need to address or put a little bit more focus or attention to adjust your routine based on what we're actually looking at right now so yeah we have these two things happening there are people who either they're not consistent or they want to jump off the bandwagon really quickly and on the other side there are people who they just don't want to change anything they haven't changed anything I just use that cream and that cream only and there's no other cream for me and I completely understand you know we love certain products and so on and that's fine if it's still working and everything is the same no problem. But doing that assessment just to check if any changes are needed is also a good idea. And the last point for this video, and like I said, I do have more points. If you all want a part three, <laughs> we could absolutely do that sometime in the future. But this is a big, big one, and it might seem so simple, but I see it all the time. And the way a lot of people sabotage their skin and their skincare routines is through complacency especially if you're dealing with skin issues like acne or any hyperpigmentation related skin issues a lot of people after they've gotten results the acne is under control you've seen your acne scars fading or you've had sunspots if you've seen them fading you've gotten a nice even skin tone and you just totally throw away the whole routine <laughs> and you're just like stop some people just stop 
And then they will message me like several months later, I'm like, well, Sherry, I kind of stopped, you know, everything was fine. No, no, <laughs> you may not need to continue the routine at the level of actives and so on that you were probably doing when you were trying to address the particular issue. However, you will still need to maintain a certain amount of actives in your skincare routine. Whenever I tell people that I'm acne prone, a lot of people don't believe me. I have been acne prone for the majority of my life now. And how I keep my acne under control is that I have not stopped my actives. Salicylic acid, my retinoid, using my niacinamide and my centella and all these things are consistently in my routine. Strengths may have changed over the years, but those ingredients are managing the issue because the thing that causes my acne may be hormonal related. I have oily skin. It means that I'm more prone to get clogged pores more than somebody who is dry. So I need to manage the sebum in my skin and all of that. So while my skin might look nice and clear, it doesn't mean that I throw away everything because bet your bottom dollar, those breakouts are going to come back. The same thing with hyperpigmentation, skin of color, guys, guys, even if we don't touch that pimple, we are going to get pigment because with skin of color, irritation is going to lead to hyperpigmentation. We are getting UV exposure, things are happening, there are hormonal changes in the body, sunspots might show up simply because of UV exposure from years ago, hyperpigmentation issues occur. You want to make sure that you do not stop your sunscreen, keep your retinoid in your routine. If you're using a brightening serum or something like that, you know, keep it in your routine. It doesn't necessarily need to be a very high strength active, but the consistency is what is going to maintain those results. So don't get complacent and don't get lazy even if you come down to a three or four step skincare routine you want to make sure that you have those things in your routine that are going to help you maintain your results don't just throw it all away okay guys <laughs> i hope that today's video was helpful for you leave a comment down below if it was and again let me know your tips and so on anything else you would love to hear me address I just decided to put all these things together because these points I see come up a lot in my skincare consultations or even when people just message me and ask me for advice and so on. So let's not overlook them. They are really, really important points. Make sure that you're not doing any of these things that you shouldn't do and it's going to keep your skincare routine in top shape. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Take care. Bye.